But until I face tomorrow's task, I have no special favor to ask. I just came to talk with you, Lord. I just came to talk with you. You are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope from Pune, India. And now, here's a nature study. Witter's Bearing Hello friends, today we are going to talk about a famous person called Witter's Bearing. Look on the globe and you will discover that North America and Asia are separated by a narrow body of water called the Bering Strait. Nearby is Bering Sea which, like the strait, is named for Vitus Bering, the Danish explorer who discovered North America and laid claim to Alaska for Queen Anna of Russia. One November day, after having drifted in a storm for three weeks, the lookout of Bering's ship spotted land. He ran to the captain's cabin, where Bering lay ill with scurvy. Sir, wake up. The sailor gently shook the old man's shoulder. Yes, what do you want? Bering grimaced in pain as he turned to face the speaker. We have spotted land. It must be Kamchatka Peninsula. Please, sir, the men want to anchor. No, the weak man whispered. We must sail on. That's impossible, the first mate said, Entering the room just then. The storm has ripped our sails. I just came to talk with you, Lord. You see, I really have no selfish motive in mind. I just came to thank you, Lord, for all the other times. But until I face tomorrow's task, I have no special favor to ask. I just came to talk with you, Lord. I just came to talk with you. You are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope from Pune, India. And now, here's a nature study. Witter's Bearing Hello friends, today we are going to talk about a famous person called Witter's Bearing. Look on the globe and you will discover that North America and Asia are separated by a narrow body of water called the Bering Strait. Nearby is Bering Sea which, like the strait, is named for Vitus Bering, the Danish explorer who discovered North America and laid claim to Alaska for Queen Anna of Russia. One November day, after having drifted in a storm for three weeks, the lookout of Bering's ship spotted land. He ran to the captain's cabin, where Bering lay ill with scurvy. Sir, wake up. The sailor gently shook the old man's shoulder. Yes, what do you want? Bering grimaced in pain as he turned to face the speaker. We have spotted land. It must be Kamchatka Peninsula. Please, sir, the men want to anchor. No, the weak man whispered. We must sail on. That's impossible, the first mate said, Entering the room just then, 
The storm has ripped our sails and broken our ropes. The men are exhausted and ill. We cannot go further. Very well, Commander Bering reluctantly gave in. Put down the anchor. Unfortunately, they anchored too close to a reef. The tide drove the ship past the reef. The anchor cable snapped and the ship was driven on to the rocky coast. The men were forced to winter on the barren island. They made dugouts for shelter and buried themselves in sand to keep warm. In his bed of sand, Commander Vitus Bering died. What a different story might have been told had the anchor held. Dear listeners, what about your anchor? Is your faith holding on firmly to Jesus? Only he can keep you safe in the storm of life. When the strong tides lift and the cables strain, faith is the anchor you need to keep you when a loud one dies. You must hold firmly to Jesus when doubts, fears and temptations threaten to shipwreck your life. That is your only safety, your only hope. Thank you for the nature study. We are sure our listeners enjoyed it. To learn more on nature, keep listening to Adventist World Radio. We will be studying different objects of nature because there is a simplicity and purity in these lessons direct from nature that makes them of the highest value. The children and youth, all classes of students, need the lessons to be derived from this source. In itself, the beauty of nature leads the soul away from sin and worldly attractions and toward purity, peace and God. Dear friend, death, struggle Pain and violence were not part of God's original creation. Let's discover what was the world like when God created it. To know more on God's Word, you could also write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio, Post Box No. 17, Pune 411001, Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on Adventist Media Center at gmail.com You may also follow our programs on our website awr.org slash English program Before you hear God's word here's another song Grace. 
Time to hear God's word. Dear listener, today I'm going to start a story on Naomi and Ruth. Well, the story of Naomi and Ruth begins with a series of tragedies in their lives and ends in triumph. This moving and heartbreaking story is relevant to us today. When two women in distress Ruth and Naomi returned to Bethlehem from Moab there was spontaneous outpouring of the sympathy for them Ruth chapter 1 verse 19 indicates that Naomi was not only popular but also highly respected in her own town perhaps Elimelech her husband was also a man of some substance in that place the reference says when they came down to bethlehem the entire town was excited by their arrival is it naomi the woman asked suggesting that people in her town and her native town could barely recognize her as her sweet face was now contorted by emotional pain and stress driven by famine with the food and employment scares in their native land Elimelech and Naomi migrated to Moab with their two sons to eke out a living both their sons were now married and the family was well settled there perhaps they had dreams of returning someday to their native place prosperous and successful but that dream turned into a nightmare in a sudden twist of circumstances tragedies struck naomi one after the other snatching away all her future hopes and dreams she lost all the three bread winners in the family first her husband then her two sons this left a massive void in the lives of naomi and her two moabite daughters in law it was the most poignant and desperate situation in their lives it is but natural for us for us to uh, be bitter and depressed when multiple tragedies strike naomi was completely devastated and became very negative about her own future and that of her daughters in law ruth chapter 1 verses 9 to 13 dear listener reduced to widowhood with all hopes burned to ashes naomi was now worried not only about uh, their survival but also their safety and security uh, keeping their age and future in mind naomi tried to persuade the two young daughters in law to remarry and settle down in their own country 
but she could uh, return to her native place then and rebuild her life in the company of her own people which she hoped uh, would offer her the solace she was looking for but ruth was not prepared to leave naomi alone in her state of deep depression and bitterness Naomi reacted to the crisis with uh, skepticism and uh, pessimism but Ruth refused to be uh, imprisoned in the debilitating uh, memories of the sad past and was determined to look ahead and move forward thus in an unusual display of her deep love and commitment she confidently volunteered to take up upon herself the responsibility of taking care of her old mother-in-law don't ask me to leave you and return back wherever you go i will go wherever you live i will live your people will be my people and your god will be my god wherever you die i will die and there i will be buried may the lord punish me severely if i allow anything but death to separate us ruth chapter 1 verses 16 and 17 dear listener while making this most difficult decision the young widow from moab uh, took a big risk of having to live like a refugee in israel in indeed the threats of physical and sexual and emotional harassment were real but god was in complete control of every situation in their lives he ensured that naomi and ruth stuck together braving all the potential threats and difficulties with god's help dear listener they overcame their bitterness and despair they rebuilt their lives with hope faith courage and resolve in an amazing spirit of love concern and devotion to each other as a result for their sufferings and fortitude god gave them the unique privilege of becoming the ancestors of king david and jesus christ ruth a childless widow from moab became the great grandmother of israel's greatest king david dear listener it is said grief knits two hearts in closer bonds with happiness ever can and common suffering have far stronger links than common joys the story of uh, ruth and naomi is the story of all those who preserve and persevere in faith and hope despite all the negatives and tragedies in their lives friends there are no negatives in life only challenges to overcome that will make you stronger a significant lesson we learn is that god can use even an unlikely person like ruth a foreigner from the uh, despised uh, mobite uh, community to accomplish his plan of salvation for mankind their tragedy was finally turned into triumph paul was right when he said and we know that for those who love god all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose Romans chapter 8 verse 28 my dear listener sometimes it's hard to see how god is working his mysteries don't always reveal their secrets to us and our journey is often uh, redirected by uncontrollable detours perhaps god is showing us a better route the circumstances in our lives seems random and unplanned but some day we will surely see the order of god's hand the same naomi who first made caustic comments in uh, disillusionment uh, ruth chapter 1 verses 20 and 21 now acknowledges the invisible hand of god shepherding them and uh, says to ruth he 
the lord is showing his kindness to us as well as to your dead husband verses chapter 2 verse 20 what appeared to be the end of the road for these two widows suddenly turned out to uh, be a great opening an anchor of hope and a reason to celebrate dear listener the icing on the cake is in the last few verses of this book ruth the lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son and then the woman of the town said to naomi praise the lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family may this child be famous in israel may he restore your youth and care for you in your old age for he is the son of your daughter in law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons Naomi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast and she cared for him as if she were her own the woman who lived there said now at last Naomi has a, a son again and they named him Obed meaning servant of God he became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David dear listener one of the major keys to success is to keep moving forward on the journey making the best of the detours and interruptions turning adversity into advantage do you find yourself stuck in a cycle of doom and gloom remember dear listener there are many events in life like death for instance there are never under our control but how we react to them is left to us if you keep focusing on the unpleasant past rather than on what god has planned for you you will only ruin your present and future life there is always light at the end of a tunnel so get rid of your bitterness and negative catastrophic thinking look at your life through the prism of god and move forward in faith there are detours in everyone's journey but beyond every mara there is an elim the psalmist says weeping may remain for a night but rejoicing comes in the morning dear listener may god bless you may he help you grow in faith and grow stronger in Jesus Christ god bless you let's pray our gracious and loving god we come to you with faith we praise you for life that you have given for each one of us lord we want to be strong like ruth and naomi though difficulties like even death came to their family they stood strong in faith they never left you lord so make us also realize our weakness and draw us and strengthen us and may we, may our faith be stronger in jesus christ who has saved us and who is the one the only one who can save us from the sin sick world in jesus precious name we pray amen
with this we have almost come to the end of our program to learn more on god's word we would love to receive your letters on adventist world radio post box number 17 pune 411001 maharashtra india you could also email us on adventist media center at gmail.com we invite you to follow our programs also on our website that's awr.org/englishprogram this is your host sharad and i am maureen signing off from adventist world radio do join us again along with your family and friends until we meet again via radio we wish you goodbye and god bless you